The ute segment is drowning in dogs. In reality, there are only three four-wheel drive utes you should seriously consider buying. So let's use the high-tech miracle of objective criteria to process the breed through the automotive abattoir. You've got your Toyota Hilux, your Nissan Navari, your Mitsubishi Triton, Ford Ranger, Isuzu D-Max, Holden Colorado, Mazda BT-50, and the Volkswagen Amarok. Plus, there's the Photon, the Mahindra, the Tata, the not-so-great Great Wall, and let's not forget Sanyong, the great monuments to automotive ugliness. The Photon, Mahindra, Tata, Great Wall and Sanyong. They've all got to go. Underdone in every respect. Safety, performance, reliability, resale value and of course, cachet. They're a mistake. That leaves us with the notionally Japanese utes plus the Holden Colorado, Ford Ranger and Volkswagen Amarok. They're nearly all made in Thailand except the Amarok. Argentina, and the STX versions of the Navara, which are made in Spain. None of the notionally Japanese utes has ever actually seen the sun rise in the land of the rising sun. That's still eight contenders, though, and I can feel it. Five, <laughs> they're just not going to make it. The knife is absolutely not arbitrary in this comparison. Opinion has nothing to do with it. There's a rational basis underpinning which utes get the chop. The things are expensive, right? They're tools of the trade, unless you're some suit in a ute, and you deserve to get the best contemporary specification possible. You want to maximise your spend. These criteria, well, they're measurable. A modern diesel with more than 400 newton metres, you'd want that. Six-speed transmissions, both manual and auto. Five stars on safety, not negotiable, because it's always a good idea to maximise your chance of walking away. Four stars, not good enough. And three's a disgrace. And you'd want three and a half tonnes worth of tow capacity. That's the current gold standard for heavy hauling in dual cab utes. These are the current best practice benchmarks in this market. And frankly, you're an idiot if you buy anything that does not tick all those boxes because it doesn't cost you any more to drive away in something that does. Nissan Navara, meet the guillotine. Navara's a joke. Nissan Australia still has the gall to sell the D22 Navara, which has only three stars for safety. The term death trap pertains. That's literally a crime against humanity right there. And the D40 version sold in parallel is four stars. Also an outdated joke. And yeah, the STX 550 does get the gruntiest engine in the ute market by 50 newton metres and a very slick seven-speed transmission. But it's still half a tonne light on tow capacity and far too likely to kill you in a crash. So the Navara just has to go. A replacement Nissan Navara is due soon, and it can't get here soon enough because the current model is a dog, and it's a dog that's about 20 years old. We're down to seven. The Mitsubishi Triton's just got to go to that great dealership in the sky too. <laughs> It's an easy choice, no video referee required. Another textbook geriatric, a four-speed auto, what a relic. Four-speed autos were cutting edge when Jesus was fullback for the Nazareth under 15s, plus 350 Newton meters. That's underdone in the engine bay today. Three ton tow capacity, well, that's half a ton light. Three strikes for the Triton. <laughs> Love that antique. And now we're down to six. Can you guess? Volkswagen Amarok. On paper, it's brilliant. And it looks great too. What a pity Volkswagen is yet to crack the kooky code of reliability. This is a direct consequence of their excessive ambition. Volkswagen 
Well, it's on a mission to be the world's largest car maker by 2018. And that's underpinned by a massive rollout of new product across multiple segments. R&D corners have inevitably been cut. And while sales are up, Volkswagen's reliability has jumped into the express elevator and hammered the button marked basement. Volkswagen dealers in Australia have a solid reputation for not giving up proverbial if you have a problem. Buying a Volkswagen is actually like playing Russian roulette with far too many of the chambers actually loaded. If you're buying a ute for business, it being off the road typically has a profound negative impact on your bottom line. So Amarox definitively out. And we're down to five. This is going to be a bitter pill for Toyota. But the Hilux is yesterday's hero. It no longer measures up. It's insanely popular and it's got the safety credentials, that's for sure. But the engine's asthmatic, 343 newton metres. It's monumentally outgunned by newer entrants. And the tow capacity's anorexic at just two and a half tonnes. And both transmissions are one ratio short of the six speeds you can have at no extra cost with other brands. Hilux no longer measures up and it's a mistake to buy one. Millions in marketing is just a veneer. Bit of icing sugar on a cake baked from outdated specifications. The market has moved on. Hilux hasn't. Oh, what a feeling. Down to four. You know, Isuzu makes such a big deal out of its purported truck-like toughness. And people get sucked into that message all the time. D-Max has the safety and it's got the tow capacity. In fact, in many ways, it's a clone of the Holden Colorado. The R&D is platform shared between this pair. But the D-Max's engine is a fail. There's a massive torque deficit compared with the Colorado. We're talking 380 newton metres versus 500 for the Holden. And there's no evidence in mitigation. If you overlay the torque curves on top of one another, I actually did this, it's there, the Holden engine storms ahead at all revs, especially all the revs where you'd normally be driving. Buying a D-Max instead of a Colorado is a monumental fail. And the D-Max offers only a five-speed auto, whereas the Colorado has six, which only serves to cast the torque deficit ever more starkly in relief. What a pity if you bought a D-Max on the purported basis of its spirit of truck. D-Max is a non-starter, and suddenly we're down to three. These are the only three utes you'd actually consider buying if you're a rational buyer. You get 400 plus newton meters, five stars for safety, six speed transmissions, and three and a half ton tow capacity. No compromises, really. And ticking these boxes is no more expensive than buying one of the lesser utes. Spared from the chop, the platform shared Ford Ranger and Mazda BT-50 in equal second place, plus the Holden Colorado, the ill-fated Isuzu D-Max's dizygotic twin. The Holden's the clear winner, forget the rest. With these three, it's all down to personal preference. You could stick photos of all three on the wall if you want, and then just turn around and chuck a dart over your shoulder, and you'd still choose the right one, because they're all right. There is no wrong answer when you chop the market down to the top three. They're all great. If you want to save thousands on one of these three utes, visit the website autoexpert.com.au and if you want one of the others, get professional help. Don't forget to subscribe for regular updates or leave a comment. Tell me what you think. In particular, tell me how wrong I am. You know, my Hilux is the toughest. I've owned an Amarok. It's been fantastic. Stuff like that. I always enjoy those. I'm John Cadogan. Thanks for watching.